Well, we're back. Welcome. Sorry about that. <laughs> Jackass dogs, man. What can I say? I love them to death. They're crazy. So, let's just regroup. Fiery. Oka did a good job with this. It's got double gold back clasps on the top and the bottom. He's got his print on the top and the bottom. The chain I like because it keeps this set together mostly. There are other ones that have had them separated and that's cool and I like those too, but I just kind of dig the difference in this. Um, it's soft enamel with cold, gold plating. Um, I think I'm showing this pretty good. It's pretty hard for it to focus, I bet. But there we go. I like it. Um, I don't think it's a wearable pin for me, but some other people may find it wearable. Uh, I like to collect Wes Anderson pins. So when I saw he had the Margot Tenenbaum, I had to jump at it. It's hard enamel. It's apparently got a flaw or something, but I don't see it. Um, maybe you can tell me, Elko, later. What that's about, but... Um, this is just a clean, nice West pen. so... You know, if you're a collector of Tenenbaum's merch, or otherwise, there it is. But uh, next up, we're gonna do the new Dysalexic pins. Um, Dix Dysalexic, because it's not Dysalexic. It's Dix Dysalexic. <laughs> Um, first up, if you didn't catch the first or the second go around on the meow pin that he did for Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman, here is the third murdered out variant that I am happy to have in my possession, probably a little earlier than most. Pick this up at the pin pop up on Saturday. Dope pin. I was thinking about this on the way there, how I hoped that he would do a murdered out variant of this, because I think this is exactly what it needs. And um, I love everything about it. I think it's a great pen. Um, there's nothing, I'll get my blue one out, actually. To give you a comparison, I should have had that out already, but here's the comparison, the blue. It's got my grubby fingerprints on it, but you get the point of that. Pretty clean. Double rubbers. It's a must have for uh, any Batman collector, I think. If you collect Batman pens, definitely a must have. Um, next, he's released a couple different versions of this. Or one different version, one version of this. Now I have the white version in my possession. I'm not sure if this is released yet or not, Alex, but there it is. I'm showing it anyway. Be cool, honey bunny. Be cool. Great pen, single post on the back, black rubber. He's doing a, a Tarantino, two Tarantino pens at a time. So this is one of two per movie, I mean. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a clean pen. It's fun to have. This is a bag pen for me. Put it on a bag. I'm sure that one close to it too. Yeah. So yeah. And then last but not least, my personal favorite, new favorite of his. Um, the Best German Nazi killer, probably best Nazi killer I ever seen. Um, killing damn good Nazis. Hugo Stiglitz. Damn fine Nazi killer. Damn fine. But this is a pretty funny pen. I just like that it's just his name outright. 
and I think it will go great with my Punching Nazis I Hate These Guys pen that he has also done. My Indiana Jones Punching Nazi pen that I have. But uh, just a clean lettering pen of, of, of Hugo. So let's do another close on that real quick. Strong. Again, I might put that on a hat, but it's more of a bag pen for me. I would say. Um, so uh, I'm sad that I had to do this show in two parts because of the dogs. They get kind of wild if I'm not supervising. So, you know, it gets kind of tough. But um, it's just one of those haphazard things. Next up, let us talk about Luna Rocks, Mary Poppins, y'all. So this is obviously a popular line from the film. Everybody loved that part. I obviously thought it was bomb because I bought the very first variant of this I found. Um, I think it's soft, ena it's soft enamel with black metal. Looks like black metal. One single post, rubber. Um, there's a couple other of these out there, but this is the one I like the best. Um, we'll see how that looks. I think that this pen is simply perfect, honestly. Like, it doesn't need to be anything more than this. The ones that actually have him holding the umbrella, I mean, that's cool and all. This is a cool one. It's got the fin. And being southern, y'all come second nature to me. Oh my god. We are just having all kinds of issues right now. No bells and whistles. Next, Vintage Poison Smoking Groot. I was excited when he put the design up for this. I thought this was a pretty cool design. Groot taking a toke probably off his own leaf, I'd imagine so. <laughs> I'm just rewatching it fall, that's funny. But uh, when he put, put, first put up the design for this, I, was, I begged him, I said, glitter in the bag and glitter in the smoke, and boy, if he didn't come through on that, that's exciting, so. This pen is my new personal Marvel favorite right now, just because of the nature in which its embellishments go, and we'll talk about those now. So, I personally like the little rocket on there. See the little rocket there? And then I also like the little pot leaves on him. The glitter obviously in the baggie. Glitter in the smoke. All the line detail in the Groot body. And obviously the little yellow tip, if you see that. So the card is really sick. I mean, he did a good job. He does his own little pill bottle thing. And this came with um, pinkish, pinkish orange backings, which are pretty sweet. So this pen is fantastic. And I highly suggest you pick one up if you are a fan of the Guardians and or collecting Groot things, which I am. There's that. I did a trade recently with the, the Lord of Creeps, with a K, Creep Lord. He did his own variant on uh, Phoenix Person. This is the last one I needed to collect all the current Phoenix Person variants that are out there. So now I have collected them all. This one, he can never go wrong with the Creep. He does great work. There's no backing or anything, but I don't really need it. This is just a simply great face, Phoenix face pen. Just go with the collection. I'll show you the close-up of that in a second. Then I also, snag from him a MODOK, which I've been meaning to get just for my Marvel stuff. MODOK for my villains. You don't come across people making many villains and MODOK is a great one, so. If you don't know who he is, look him up. I ain't got time to tell you. <laughs> Phoenix Person by Creep Lord. MODOK by Creep Lord. I mean, I'm running through these quicker because I don't like these 40 minute videos. It takes so freaking long to talk about these things. And I wish that it was more than just me talking up here, but it's not. I mean, we got a, people, a few people in here. 
What's up, El, El Black Bat? We got Clay Grand Space Cadet Collective, Ursa Major Supply, I dig it. So, let's move right along then. Um, the Harvey Dent pen that Farts by Dallas has done, I don't know how everybody's feeling about it. I don't even know if this is what a Harvey Dent Two Face would look like with the blue face similar to the cartoon, but I think it's fantastically done. Good job, Dallas. Great fart you've put out here. I approve of this far. I, I vote Dent for DA. But the detailing, and let's just get into that real quick. It's a soft enamel. It's soft enamel, but the detailing in this, you know? Very, very, like, just very precise lines and coloring in the black, and I mean, I hope Billy D's seen my tags. I've tagged Billy D in this to see this, but this is a fantastic uh, version of original Batman art. And we gotta appreciate and respect those because oops, there aren't many of them out there. I mean, there are a few, but there aren't many quality versions of variant. Art. Just wanna make sure that I'm not zoomed in. But great job, Dallas. I like it. It's on my list for pin of the year. In this early year. Which I plan on making a thing. I have a lot of plans for this. I hope it takes off. I hope I can continue with it because sometimes life doesn't let you continue things that you enjoy out of circumstance. But I'm enjoying this and if you are too, then help me make it grow. I want all the makers to know that if there's any information that you'd like for me to pass on while I'm doing this, that, that uh, I want to turn this into kind of like just a pin collector's stream. And um, if I can help spread the knowledge of your pre-orders, your upcoming designs, sales, releases, appearances, et cetera, collaborations, all these things, um, I'm more than happy to share the knowledge and dispense the wealth of it. So on this stream and on my page and all that, I wanna be able to uh, uh, be a resource and also um, just uh, improve the community's overall interaction. Got this in a trade from Katie Seward. It's a El Jefe uh, BL, I think it's Black Cat. I don't know if it's supposed to be pronounced that way, but Blavac cat um the blade 2 blood hunt uh anniversary pen that they released i didn't buy this originally because it wasn't at the top of my list but she wanted to trade it for something i had already so that's great i mean katie thank you for providing that awesome um pickup there i mean i worked at new line blade was a cornerstone the one thing I will say about this pen, and I know that how, how expensive it can be, but there could be a cutout right here under Blade's arm, and that would make this, that would enhance this pen if there was a cutout right there. Cutouts are kind of important, I know they're expensive, but if you would have had one right there, this pen would have added a little more depth, I think. That's my only critique on that pen. Otherwise, it's just a dope part of my collection now. Thank you, Katie. I'm saving the best for last since it is hump day. The booties are coming, Clay. Just hang with me, buddy. I promise. I'm getting there. Um, the last thing we're going to do before we do the booty, though, is the Circa Survive R2-D2. Now, they package this so that you could save it. But the problem with that is, is that the inner bubble thing isn't really packaged properly, so it's kind of unsavable. And I'll show you right now as we open it. But I saw this. Now, I'm not a Circa Survive fan. I'm not like... I have Circa, Circa, it's not my thing. I don't, sticker, always appreciated stickers, love them. I don't, you know, Circa, Circa is more my brother's flavor of band, but I respect and appreciate their desire to do something in an homage to a band like this with something so sick and dope as this, but it comes in its own little like action figure packaging. The back of it has a full set list of songs in the vein of Circa for R2-D2 and 3PO. I was hoping they'd put out this variant with 3PO2. I don't know if that's coming, guys. If you see this, Special Ed, um, if you see this, the, the, the 3PO would be perfect to go along with this. I don't know why that wasn't thought of, or if it is, then kudos to you for doing it. I just had to have it. I'm an R2 fan. So R2 stuff is just right up my alley. Should I give it to my brother because he's a Circa fan? Maybe, but I'm a bigger R2 fan than he is a Circa fan, so no, I will be keeping this. And we are going to remove it from its little package right now because it's driving me absolutely crazy to sit on these beautiful pens. We'll leave it on the backing though, how about that? We'll leave the backing as is right now. But that's fun, that's a great, I mean it's beautiful. It's hard enamel, 
Oh, I, okay, we'll get up close. I forgot. I'm sorry, guys. Look at this. Beautiful. All right. So last but not least on the review side, we got the ladies of the 80s coming. And I had to have this set in particular for uh, Cheek Tara, because I'm a huge Thundercats fan. Cheek Tara is, is the epitome of my juvenile um, crushes, if you will. And you really knocked a home run out of the park with this one, Clay. I think that this idea was fantastic. You executed it perfectly. We're gonna go over each of them one at a time and uh, just kind of talk about where you did certain things I liked and other things that I thought um, that probably have nothing to do with your fault because of the manufacturing. I found a couple flaws on some of mine, so we'll get at that. But let's lay these out and go into them one at a time the right way. So let's talk. Let's start with my favorite first of all. Cheek Tara. Look at this thing. I mean, the colors, great. The embellishments with the little cufflinks on her boots that stick out, I love that. Um, it's epoxy, soft enamel, double stamped with his backing stamp, great. The backing cards are fantastic. Like, just a lot of thought went into this. And this is, this is what I mean by really being thorough with your vertical and horizontal horizontal integration of everything. Everything is in a theme here. Everything. It's fantastic. It's seamless. It's beautiful. I love it. Next we have the Joja Peach, which I do believe is Lady Jane. I'm not sure. But like I said, the embellishment on the side with the knife, unique. Okay. Um, there is a little little marking right here on the side man i don't know what that's about but if you see this holler at me let me know um, whether or not you got others that are like that and that's just how it is or if i got a not lemon but maybe a peach <laughs> um, next up we got our transformers our autobot arse again the embellishments with the pink on the sides and the fact that this i think that this like buttocks frame is different than the others they don't all look the same, so I appreciate the fact that you didn't just template the same one over and over again. I don't think you did, but if you did, then I'm sorry to have assumed otherwise. Um, and then lastly, our Black Magic Woman. This has been something someone's tattooed already on themselves, which I find very funny. But I have a little speck in her cheek right here. If you can see it, see this little brown speck right there? It's a bummer flaw, it somehow worked its way into the epoxy, but like I said, love the embellishment, the skull and crossbones at the top, you can feel it. All the cards are great. In a theme, together. And I can't wait for the next set. That's up for pre-order now on his site. Check it out, Clay Graham Art. And there we have it. Um, that's really all the pen reviews we're gonna do. The last thing I really wanted to chat about was trades and values, perceived versus actual. So I got an offer on her pen and I told them what I would want for it and I never got a response, which leads me to believe that they didn't think it was worth it or didn't even wanna engage with me on trying to haggle the price down or, or like negotiate. So if that happens in a trade, you can only assume that the, the, the person that has asked for it doesn't understand what they're asking for. But for those of us who do understand what we're asking for when we ask for trades, Scarlet, Scarlet. Okay, I, I'm not, I'm not the biggest GI Joe fan, so I couldn't remember. But uh, thank you. I love it because I do like green. I do like green. And the knife, the embellishments, man. Like I said, like the little, it's the little, the little things that go a long way in these details that I really like about it. So, um, but anyway, when you offer, when you ask someone to either buy or trade for a pen, you are initiating your interest. You are initiating that you want and they have. And when you initiate that you want and they have, they have full right to elaborate on the value of it if they are the ones with it because of their ab ab ability to set the tone for the value of the item because it's in their possession. Now what I mean by that is if they have insider knowledge or like I know something about the pen in particular that was, that was asked to be bought. I knew that that pin was never going to be released in that variant ever again. And the pin at the time that I purchased it was probably eight bucks. I priced it at 20 because it will never be printed ever again. And the only way to ever get this pin again is from the maker's personal stash, which you have to see them in person to do. And that's 
what I know of it. So that's what happened. And I never heard back and that's fine. But what I want to get at with that is there's always someone who is going to pay it. And I'm willing to wait them out as someone who holds the valuable item that you're searching for. So other etiquette and protocol goes of trading. You want to get equal for equal. You want to make sure that everything is on the board and you want to make sure that you're not um, being duped or, or you're not, you know, having some kind of misappropriation of trade value in something that just because you want it, you know, doesn't make it worth what you want it for. I guess is that that's what I'm getting at. Um, I'm not sure. I was hoping someone else would have an opinion on this while I'm talking about it because I don't. Who's the offering first? That's what to think about. Um, when you want it, you're gonna have to give more. And think about the extras. Like if you're trading and there's 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 a way for you to buy extras of ones you know are probably gonna be valuable again. Buy extras of them. Just do it. You're making an investment, and you gotta understand how to read the patterns of those releases and other trends. Like if you were able to get ice cream pins, and you know, or this. Uh, Dexter's Lab or whatever these random pins that I've heard of that sell out in seconds. I'm not I'm not sure how those pins even go so fast, but just like the Disney pins, pins are gonna some of these are gonna be more valuable than others at some point, and you gotta just realize uh, when to draw the line at what's worth getting for yourself and what's worth getting for later for others. So uh, that's it. The last. Um, little thing was this trade so or this contest so I'm putting together a contest and I've coordinated many great LA uh, pin makers so far and even one particular comic shop in LA who is going to participate and I'm hoping it's going to be in the vein of a game of tag and the only way I can describe it in that is on the first day which will come from me I will release a photo of a pin from the first maker involved and the pin that will be released within the contest giveaway from that maker, right? Does that make sense? So that pin and that maker will be revealed day one. And in order to participate and get an entry, you must follow me and that pin maker, go to that pin maker's page and turn notifications on so that when they post the next pin maker's pin the next day, you can repost that as well. So you have to repost my original posting of that pin and that pin maker follow me and that pin maker. Then the next day that pin maker will then be the tagged poster of the next entry. So they will post of then the next maker in line and that pin and then that pin's post needs to be reposted by you and so on and, and followed and so on and so forth until we reach the final day of the giveaway. Now the way that your entries work will be from when you start the contest until you end the contest, if you're there for every day of the contest and you enter and repost every day of the contest a different pin that's going to be won within the contest, you get that many entries times two. So let's say you do every day consecutively and if you do all those days consecutively, you get that many days times two entries. So let's say you do 20 days worth, you get 40 entries. Would that make sense? It also counts in that Let's say you do three days in a row and then you stop for a day and you miss a day, but then you pick up on the fifth day. So the fourth day you missed. In order to restart again, you're going to have to repost the fourth days that you missed and that fifth day to restart again. And that only counts as a new one single entry. You'll miss the fourth day's entry. You won't get that, but you have to do that posting to restart participation. If you come along in the contest later in the game of tag, this is a game of tag, remember. If you come along later in the reposting, you are going to essentially have to repost all of the photos that you missed up until the day that, of the contest. So let's say you don't enter until day five or day 10, and it's a 25 day contest. You have to go back and repost 10 different days worth of pins included in the contest in order to achieve one entry starting. Then you have to do it consecutively. So this is what I'm, I'm trying to propose a contest that keeps you engaged in the excitement building towards revealing all the pins apart and all the makers a part of the contest. Um, and that way you'll get more awareness both as a maker and as a participant. Because if you're, if you're participating and reposting with all the hashtags we use, that means more people are gonna find your page and more people are going to interact with you, possibly more people to trade with, more people to buy from, all this stuff. It creates more engagement, it creates, creates more connectivity. So that's my goal, is a giant game of pin tag. 
get ready guys. I'm excited about it. So that's going to be it for today's broadcast in two parts with a nice little dog intermission. I hope you enjoyed the new setup. Let me know in the comments and um, I hope to see you on the next one. Peace out guys. Aeroplane.